wanted to throw in the towel the first day when I got the goats. What did I do? I mean, why did, did I get these goats? Why am I making my life so much harder? If this kid gets stuck here, she's gonna die. Did, couldn't I put my hand in there and I thought, what am I touching here? What is this? Emotionally, I don't know if I can do this again. And I just think that taking the time to leave a comment to say something like that speaks more about you. I really don't want to see them struggle. I, I really didn't think that the rest of the babies were gonna be alive. I wanted to jump through the screen and say, what happened to you? You know, who did this to you? But this is not a hobby. This is my dream job and I get to do it and share it with you guys and whoever wants to watch it. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Heavenly Homestead. Today is the last episode of Vlog March, and I wanted to say thank you for your support, for coming back, watching the videos, and give the welcome to everyone that subscribed since this series started. I truly appreciate your support, your engagement, your comments, your likes, and your just thoughts that you share with me in the comments and as you're getting more exposure you get more comments that maybe are not so positive so in today's video i'm going to do a q a and i'm going to share some of those comments with you and i just picked a few of the negative comments to share with you and to give a little explanation because i feel like it's not worth dwelling on them but at the same time they're legitimate questions or thoughts and I thought I'd expand a little bit on those. I also wanted to thank everyone that took the time to ask a question, left it on my community page or Facebook, Instagram. I got a few questions there too so I'm gonna include them all here while I try to keep my camera away from goats which is gonna be interesting but I don't have Clara but I have Athene. Athene turned into mini Clara She's six weeks away from having her kids or from her due date and she's driving me absolutely insane. She is always hungry, just like her mom. She's fighting to get into the feeding room or the milking room and she is extremely, extremely naughty. So you might have to excuse a few cuts because again, she's trying to climb into my tripod. Which was another thing. Somebody asked this question and I didn't write it here. Well, she gave a suggestion and said, why don't you get a tripod so we can actually see things? And um, she left that comment on Clara's video where she had the quads and lost the little girl that was born first. Now, I debated if I was gonna share that part because I really did not have good enough footage to share it. But when that happened before, a lot of you guys said, well, at least leave the audio if you don't get the footage because it really helps to see or to hear that this kind of things happen and we just have to learn to deal with them and sometimes you know it's, it's just an experience that you watch somebody else go through and I also got another one in that same video but it got more exposure it got more views and I think that's why you know it was exposed to more people that maybe are not into my channel or they're not you know they're not following vlog march they're not following what's happening and if i have to be 100 percent honest i was too worried about clara to think about the video the fact that the camera kept rolling while i was going through what was happening it was just uh i don't know something that i forgot to shut off because i wasn't going to share it not because i didn't want to share it but because at that moment the last thing i was thinking about was sharing this moment with somebody i was trying to make sure that clara was okay i really didn't think that the rest of the babies were gonna be alive and that was a lot of stress for me and not only because of the babies not being alive but it was also because you know i just wanted to get through this birth and make sure that Clara was okay. If you watched that video, if you haven't, I'm gonna link it up here. And there's also gonna be a playlist where you can click on and watch the entire series of Vlog March in case you missed it. 
so I don't really I won't apologize for being worried about Clara and for not thinking about what you were seeing at the time to be honest I just didn't want to share even that audio of what was happening and that little bit of something that you were able to see as I was dealing with the dead baby. So most people don't share that kind of thing. I know people here on YouTube that when they lose babies, they don't even mention it. Um, they said, you know, they had, you know, she had a single and maybe she had twins and, you know, and that's okay. People do different things according to what they think is best for their channel. But in my attempt to be as transparent as possible, you know, I will share the emotional part of things. And again, some people don't get it. Other people accuse me of like taking advantage of my goat being in pain and that's and why was I filming this birth and again I just I understand it because there's people that just bump into this video and they do not understand the meaning behind it but if they did I mean if they were following other channels that share births and stuff like that they would know why another but, one that was you know, more of a comment and not so much of a question was one that I got recently and you know I said to Annie when she was giving birth and again if you missed that video they're gonna start to pop as I'm talking about them but I was saying you did it Annie you did it and this person wrote no you did it so I want to explain this a little bit because there's a little bit of confusion or maybe a lot of confusion around helping those deliver babies and you know, I just want to explain why I do it and when I do it. And this is going to be, I'm going to try to be as brief as I can. But in Annabelle's case, what happened is that after those are trying to push a big baby for a while, sometimes they start stalling their progress. They either sit or they do something to stop the contractions and they, they kind of stall the birth. And by me encouraging her was just to help her keep going keep trying despite the fact that she was giving birth to a ginormous first baby so what I meant by you did it is being able to get the head out once the head out is out if they are in a proper position you can help them by pulling slightly on this baby and it will come right out because the biggest part is the head and so they're already dilated you're not going to do anything to hurt them if you wait for a contraction and you just help it come out easily for me it's more about bringing relief to my girls and making it faster if i can help it i will do it some people don't understand this because they don't have goats or they don't have animals so they cannot get the idea of how fulfilling it is when you can do something to help. I really don't want to see them struggle. I don't want them to be in more pain than they need to be and I know that Annabelle would have pushed that little girl, that big girl out of her within minutes but if there's something I can do to help it go faster then I think it's the humane thing to do for my herd and I'm not saying everyone should some people just wait until they finish the entire process but in my experience when there's a big baby sometimes they stall and that never helps because if there's more than one baby those other babies are getting stuck in there for longer and like whatever happened with Annabelle if you saw that birth the last baby that came out it was all full of meconium it came out of the bag it wasn't she wasn't in a bag so I I don't know I didn't see her umbilical cord break I really thought that she wasn't alive at the moment that I picked her up she was kind of limp and then when I started cleaning her she started breathing so that was amazing but I know that when girls stall their progress their labor then bad things can happen so if I can help them I will 
sue me you know that's what I do and I'm not expecting you to do it I don't think everyone should do it I do it because I want it I want to make it easier for them not because they can't do it another comment that I got is please stop kissing those goats and let them nurse I wouldn't want to be that goat and this is not specifically what she said but she she that's that's what she meant I I can't find that I don't know if she deleted it or what it was but it was in a recent video um, and I was going through my comments on my side as a creator and I could not find it there. So it maybe is there, but there was one video that I shared recently where I was putting them to nurse for a mom. And then I, I think it was Clar Clarita that I put her on top of me and I was giving her the blanket and she was so snuggly and she was so sweet. And so I was kissing her and I was telling her how beautiful she was and all that stuff. And then I grabbed the other boy and I kissed him too. And this lady, apparently, you know, I just wanted to jump through the screen and say what happened to you you know who did this to you because clearly you don't have to agree the way that I do things but if there's something like affection really bothering you about a video maybe you shouldn't be watching that channel or maybe you shouldn't be watching that video I'm not saying that there is something wrong with people that find affection offensive you know you do you you're entitled to that but I just think that taking the time to leave a comment to say something like that speaks more about you than really what the video was about or why I was kissing the goat. So, um, you know, I just, I think that if you've been following my channel for a while now, you know that these goats live for affection. Um, I sit down, right now they're eating a tree. <laughs> Well, my husband was trimming so they're excited over there that's why I'm hiding here if I was sitting over there I would have goats crawling all over me and trying to get kisses and hugs and affection they'd be kissing my face and they'd be eating my hair and they are very much used to this kind of affection that I give them now I don't have any babies right now my youngest son is a junior in high school and that will come into another question um, that will be in a few minutes but I've always been this way with kids my kids in particular I've always been very affectionate I've always been all over them telling them how much I love them a million times always kissing them always hugging them always touching their hands or you know playing with their arms or doing something and my kids always loved it now when I got goats was when the kids were already kind of growing up and doing their own things some were going to college other ones moved out and you know I all the love and everything that I have in my heart I pour into this goats because I truly love them it's this is not about showing you how much I love them is this is the way that I raise them this is the way I do things and I think that in the end, what I'm trying to share is the lifestyle, do it in a vlog kind of way, and not really telling you what you should be doing with your goats. I do understand that they're livestock, that they should have a purpose, and every single one of my goats has a purpose in this farm. And just because I love them and I show them that I love them in a physical way doesn't mean that I do things differently from any other farm. It just means that I take the time to be affectionate with them because I truly love them and that's the way that my heart speaks to people. That's the person I am. They're part of my life. This is what I want to do. This is why I moved out of the city to live in the country to do. This was my goal. This is my dream. So if I am miserable doing my dream, then it was likely not what I wanted to do. It wasn't really my dream, but something that I thought I wanted to do. But this is living my dream. And if I'm living my dream, I need to do it with my whole heart. And that's a pair, the kind of person that I am. I am very much an affectionate person and if I love you, you will know it because I'll tell you a million times. So I feel bad for this person that feels like the goats were hungry and that I wasn't bothering them by showing affection. 
but I guess that's where everyone stands, you know, we're all living different lives and, you know, sometimes people just think whatever they live. And so I feel bad for this person because, again, she was like, I would not want to be that goat. And, it, you know, I even replied to her and said, I wouldn't do it to you, but I do it to my goats because I love them. You know what I'm saying? Then I had it's this other question that said, don't you have a job? Um... I do. This is part of my job. You know, the goats are like my family. I love them to pieces. But in the end, it's also a business. Uh, a business where I am providing milk and selling milk. Where I am making cheeses. Where I'm making soap and selling my soap. Um, our community, where we live, it's a big supportive community of things that are made here locally and it's kind of easier to sell something that is made here so part of having goats leaves me with a way to make an income and this is the lifestyle that we chose so when we sold everything in the city to move to the country we sold everything like we only have the things from inside our house and little by little we've been getting rid of them and we don't have a house and we don't have the things that a lot of people do but this is our this is what we wanted we wanted a simple life we didn't want a mortgage we didn't want debt and we don't have it we have this property and we're developing it we're doing everything that we can to make it happen in a way where we don't have to go into debt to do it so because of that i feel like i am able to have a job here at the farm now this is not my only job i quit my full-time job that made a good income for doing this but i still do things and locally to make money and they're connected to the farm so because of that i feel like people think when they watch my videos that this is a hobby but this is not a hobby this is my dream job and I get to do it and share it with you guys and whoever wants to watch it. That's pretty much it. Then there was this other one. Because I always keep saying that I do have OCD tendencies. And I'm saying it because it was diagnosed that way. I'm not, I'm not saying it because I'm kind of obsessed with having things clean. But there are certain things. And I think it was in one of the videos where I was putting the food in the you know in that feed room over there and I always have to make sure that it's even on each one of those little bowls and it's kind of stupid I understand it that I had to go back and put a little bit more like a tiny bit more in a few of the bowls because it wasn't even and you know this person assumes that you can't have a farm and have OCD uh, and I think I'm proving you wrong uh, you can you just put a lot of extra work on yourself because you want certain things to look a certain way. Uh, I am very particular about my animals. If I wouldn't drink from the bucket myself, I'm not gonna give that water to my goats. I'm not gonna give it to my ducks and I'm definitely not giving it to my dogs. Um, the bowls need to be clean. They have to be sanitized very often, maybe too often, and they need to look clean on the inside and the outside I know I understand that's kind of ridiculous for a farm I get it but I make it work so um, I think that I am the living proof that you can have a farm and have a little bit of OCD um, so it will never be perfect according to my standards whatever I do will never be perfect but you can have a farm, even when you have OCD tendencies. And the next question is, don't you have a life outside the barn? <laughs> Which I thought it was hilarious. And I like to think so. <laughs> I even wrote that here. Uh, I do spend a lot of time in the barn and in general with my animals. But I like to believe that I'm good at prioritizing what's the most important thing today what needs to happen today what needs to happen in the next hour in the, you know in the afternoon tonight we need to make sure that the most important thing gets taken care of so because of that i do spend a lot a lot of time in the barn while the kids are here 
and I'm talking about between when they start kidding until the new babies leave the farm. That can be an eight week process, it could be a 12 week, could be a little bit longer depending on how well the kids are growing and my standards of when I would sell a kid. A kid. Um, but, you know, because of that, I always think about this period as exhausting but fulfilling. It really fulfills me to do this kind of job. And I go above and beyond. I weigh these kids. I make sure I put the moms in the stand. I put them to nurse from them. I make sure that they have the cleanest stall every night. I go above and beyond. But I do know that this time will have an end line. And I almost kind of identify it with how kids are, you know. But kids will stay with you for 18 years. <laughs> so, you know, it's a period that while you're going through, you know, that first year of a baby, you know, the, the terrible twos of a baby, you feel like it's never going to end. You're exhausted. You're tired. You cannot even brush your hair in the mornings. You're lucky if you can get into the shower at night. And, you know, you're just extremely tired and busy and you think you're going to die. Well, let me tell you something. Kids grow and eventually you realize that you're not as needed as before and that's the same thing that happens with these babies they need me now 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 that they're babies now that they're helpless now that they're not as strong now that they're little the sooner that i can make those kids be strong and be uh, healthy the sooner that they will enjoy a better life a healthier life in their new farms so yeah, I do spend a lot of time here, and I feel like I don't have a life out of this. They're playing with the gate. But even, even if I don't have a life out of this, this is the life that I want. The next to one is my favorite. You're trying too hard. <laughs> and I'm going to try to make it brief, but I can talk about this all day. Most people that you're watching here on YouTube, they have a family, a growing family. Like they have kids, they have little kids, and they are trying to do the homesteading while they raise their kids. That's not my case. Uh, my kids are older. My youngest is a junior in high school, and even though he keeps us busy because he does sports and he does a lot of things that we want to be there for, um, I still have a lot of time that I wouldn't have otherwise. I don't have little kids that I have to worry about bottles. I don't have to worry about kids sitting with kids and feeding them. I just have older kids. And when they are home, they're able to make themselves a sandwich. They're able to go to the bathroom by themselves. So when I look at other channels like Sage and Stone Homestead, Roots and Refuge, or, you know, GWP Homestead, they have little kids and they do have a life outside of their farm that it's kind of connected to the farm because they're raising their kids while they're doing all this. I am not. So I do have extra time that those families don't have. And so I do things differently from what they do because I do have that extra time to make the adjustments that I think are important. So yeah, sometimes I spend the night in the barn and sometimes I am up all night with babies giving them bottles. And sometimes I'm just doing things that if I had a little baby or if I had little kids, I wouldn't be able to do it. And you know, my son is gonna go to college you know, he's going to be a senior next year and then eventually he's going to go to college. So this is going to fall on me, on my husband. So we have to be able to manage everything that we have. We have to have the infrastructure, the infrastructure, all the things that we need to make this work for us. So for me, it's very important that you understand that even though I'm only 40 years old, my kids are all grown and they are my, my kids. They were inside my um belly and everything but they just you know we started young and we got done with the little stages very soon and you know in our 30s and now i'm 40 and i have the extra time to do the things that i want to do with my time without having to carry around a little kid now I could have done this before, but I thought I couldn't because I was too busy and I did not want to get my kids from where they were and move them to the middle of nowhere at the time. So I did wait 
for quite a while but now things are different and of course I have the extra time that maybe other growing families don't have okay so this I think it was Facebook Rita Smith asked if you could only keep one goat who would you keep and I know this is a hard one thanks if I have to be a hundred percent honest um, I would keep Clara I and again there's things that I don't like about Clara confirmation wise like I don't I think her <clears throat> skin in the udder is harder than other girls that are easier to milk but Clara has this the perfect structure uh, for you know perfect for me structure in her udder and confirmation wise and she's a great doe and all the things but she's not the perfect doe but if I only could keep one I would keep Clara um, it goes beyond confirmation and what I like about her it's just her personality she's extremely smart and Clarita is taking after her mom which I think it's gonna be so much fun for you guys to follow along and, but Clara is one of those girls that really I don't know I, it's really hard to tell you the connection that we have and if you watch her birth this year you could tell I mean she has this bond with me where she trusts me a hundred percent like I can never scare her I can never you know walk behind her and scare her she's always like oh it's you you know fine great awesome so because of that I just feel like uh, we have bonded in a way that I I'm not able to bond with other goats and I love them all the same I love that Mocha is very sweet and very sentimental uh, very affectionate and I love that Annabelle is very independent and she teaches those kids to be independent and to be strong-headed and to be leaders and you know all my girls have their different personalities but if I could only keep one it'd be Clara just because of the connection that I have with her and just because of how much she trusts me I have this bond with her that I really cannot explain why and how it happened but it happened um, and coming back to her birth video if you saw that she was sitting on my lap trying to push these babies out I mean she was like catch them <laughs> you know but she she wants to be on my lap she wants to be with me she wants to you know her life it's very much Telling you. I'm telling you, Athena's driving me absolutely insane. I hope that as soon as you have those babies, you're just gonna turn into my sweet little girl again because I'm kind of over this. I am a mean pregnant lady. Okay, the next question is by Martha Summer and says, Hi, lady, and thank you for sharing your month with us. I'm curious on how many babies are you keeping and how many have you sold? Thank you. I have a reservation for four out of the 13 that we have available and I'm possibly keeping three maybe four number f the the fourth one I'm not I'm, I really want to keep her but the problem is I wouldn't have a buck here that is not somewhere related to her so I would have to get another buck or take her somewhere to be bred and that's kind of a pain in the rear the other three girls that I'm keeping I'm able to breed them with one of the bucks here so I I have no problem but that's what happens when you're starting to keep one girl from each you know new mom it gets harder so yeah I'm keeping three possibly four I'll let you know when I decide and I have reservations for four already so then this other one that says so you live in a trailer yes we do and I am very very happy to live in a trailer and I'm gonna make that very clear because some people say well you live in a trailer and you have goats I've gotten that comment before yeah I do this is for some people it's gonna be very hard to understand that this is my life's dream living here where we live in the community that we live in the woods in raw land in a trailer if that's the, the price I have to pay living in a trailer for not having a mortgage, for not having debt, for not having credit cards, then that's the price I have to pay. And I'm 100% okay with it. I don't feel less of a person for living where we live and doing the things that we do. 
I'm very, very happy. And that is something that I wasn't when I had everything. When I had the house, when I had the new cars, when I had the, the you know, the RV and the trips and all the toys and all the things, I was not happy. And now I'm happy. I have little compared to what I had, but I'm 100% happy with that. So that is something that I just want to make very, very clear. Um, it's a personal choice. It's not something that just happened and we ended up in this situation. Now, the next question is, the next question is uh, by Deborah. Hi, Deborah. That was so sweet. I appreciate you watching for, from the beginning or, you know, for a long time. It says, hi, sweetheart. I've been watching you for so long, long now. The highs, the lows, and in between. Can I ask, has there ever been a time when you've been tempted to throw in the towel and also can I ask the impossible? How many babies do you think you've brought into the world? Thank you for reading. And oh, please, don't ever throw in that towel. Big hugs to you and the family, and God bless you all. Now, hi, Deborah. This was so sweet. I truly appreciate you leaving this question. I was doing the math right before I started it. I think we've had in the farm 29 babies out of those 29 babies in three different kidding seasons because we started with only two girls um, the first kidding season uh, three of those 29 were kind of delivered by Annie while I was milking so not those three but in total in our farm we've had 29 births and without counting the two that were born this kidding season with my boys so that's another so five out of those 29 uh, made it out by themselves which that was a really good thing and have I ever thought about throwing in the towel well I'm gonna tell you something I wanted to throw in the towel the first day when I got the goats I went to pick them up I brought them and all I had was the barn the initial the the original and I got electric fencing and I put it all around I mean, we made this you know huge area for them and they did not respect it and they were getting tangled in the net because it wasn't strong enough to keep them away from the electric net it was a very expensive purchase because we needed a bigger area for the goats and they did not respect it and I was so stressed out that I was crying my eyes out. I had one of my kids' friends here. I was so embarrassed. I was crying around, hugging my kids and telling them how frustrated I was because I couldn't keep the goats inside the electric fencing. And I spent a couple of days. I did not go to work. We were doing big, long hauls of cars between Eugene and Medford at the time, which is a long ways from here and um, I remember having to stay for those two days because the goats would not stay in and you know how hard it is to catch a goat especially a goat that you're not bonded with that they don't listen to you they don't know you and that they're scared because they just moved out of their farm so yeah it was a nightmare um, I ended up just returning the fencing and getting the actual roll of sheep and goat fencing and we ended up doing this when one of my kids came to visit my husband and the other boys Kind of got all this together in a day all the fencing together in a day um that first day i also had to milk clara because when i got her she was in milk but both of her boys were sold at the previous farm so i didn't bring any babies with her and she was in milk and i never milked before and i remember tying her to a fence because i did not have a milk stand so i tied her to a fence i put a little one of those um feeding bowls that you can clip to a fence and she was not patient with me and she did not want me to milk her she was kicking she was kicking the bucket she was just I did not know how to milk so I was watching a video while I was milking her she was being a pain in the rear and I remember that night thinking what did I do I mean why didn't did I get this goats why am I making my life so much harder I don't think I can do this I really don't think I can do this and then a few days later I took you know kind of I got some courage and I contacted the breeder and I said you know I this is how I'm feeling and she was like oh welcome to the club of the first-time goat owners it really is 
stressful when you ha don't have all the things that you need like a milk stand to milk a goat it's really stressful when you don't have the fencing that you need it's really like the circumstances are making it more stressful it's not the goats it's just that they i wasn't ready for them and that made it into like a super big deal and i ended up having some of the worst anxiety attacks and even a panic attack because i could not do it and i ended up having to lock them up i had five goats at the time clara mocha annie um rocky who is a baby eight weeks old and his brother who was also eight weeks old so there were tiny little boys and i had to lock them up inside the house the goat house because there was no way that i could leave them outside and then every morning and every afternoon we would put them on the leash and walk them around so they could grace a little bit and walk and stretch their legs because they were inside the house they had hay they had food they had water they had everything but they were stuck inside and it was a nightmare so yes i considered throwing in the towel back then since then um i don't no i'm not i'm lying there um i think i had this thought this kidding season after what happened to clara and i remember <laughs> This is so embarrassing, but I remember sitting on the couch and thinking to myself after, you know, Claire had her babies, I brought her inside with the other three. I kept her inside for the night and I remember sitting on the couch so exhausted, smelling like a goat, trying to wait for my, the water here to heat up the water so I could take a shower. And I was thinking to myself, I don't know if I can do this again emotionally I don't know if I can do this again it was so heartbreaking to lose that little girl I felt very responsible at the time I thought maybe she died um, as she was waiting to come out because Clara was stalling the labor and I felt like I should have gone in and got her out but something in my head was also telling me that I wasn't going to be able to do that because Clara was not dilated. And then thinking about it and talking to people, I realized that that wasn't the case. That that baby probably died the day before, for whatever reason, died the day before. And what happened is that Clara wasn't stalling. It was just that that baby was not pushing herself out. And Clara was doing all the work by herself. So it, it really took her a long time to get her out because she was doing the work for the baby and for herself. And even though the baby was tiny, it was a dead weight and she had to push it out. And, you know, thankfully I did what I do with every single goat. When I see them that the head is out, the next contraction, I just try to pull to help her get the baby out and not have to continue to work at it. So. At that time, I was so frustrated that I really considered that. And then when, and then when we lost Rosie, then that was another moment where I thought, "Am I good enough to do this? Do I have the heart to keep doing this? Do I want to put myself in this situation again?" And really, every time I had a birth after Clara. I was extremely nervous and I was extremely anxious and almost like I was expecting something to go wrong and maybe that's why things went wrong because if you remember Briere's birth she had one this one boy that was breached and I could not tell that was his back end I did couldn't I put my hand in there and I thought what am I touching here? What is this? And I just could not make it out. I could not think of what part of the body. And at that moment, I thought, if this kid gets stuck here, she's going to die. She's going to die. And by the time I get her to a vet, uh, it's going to be too late. And I felt very responsible and I felt very much scared at the time and I remember calling my husband and saying can you please come come and be here so if she wants to run away from me as I'm going in I'm gonna get this kid out and at the moment that he came 
and he was gonna grab her to make sure she didn't move while I went in because I was gonna go all the way in to try to feel other parts of the body to figure out what was happening with this baby so when I finally said that I go in and I feel a hawk and then I feel another hawk and I'm like oh my gosh it's the butt so I I just slid the so I just slid the back leg out and it came like <laughs> and I thought to myself oh my gosh I was drowning in a cup of water <laughs> So I've thought about it. Every time, every time things get hard, I question myself. I question if I can do this. But I always come to the same conclusion that yes, I can, and it will be okay. And I'm just, things are gonna happen, and the only thing I can do is be ready for when things happen, and to have the knowledge to deal with those things. Right now, I feel like I can do this. Wait until Athene decides to give birth. In May 14th, that's her due date. So I'll probably get a little bit of the feeling. <laughs> okay, so this question is, and I'm gonna end it here. I have many more questions, but I think it's just gonna make it into the longest video ever. So this is by Devin and she said, so what's the fascination with all the Chamosé goats and why do you have so many related? Isn't that bad? And then she said, I'm so happy for you. You did a great job. Well, thank you. I appreciate all your help over Facebook and just leaving comments. You really were a lifesaver and a lot of, you know, <sighs> When I, when I wasn't sure what I was doing, I really appreciate your words of wisdom. So, thank you. Uh, the girls are related. Clara is the main one. And then Mocha and Annabelle are her girls. Then Mocha had the twins. So, the twins are Mocha's girls. And Annabelle had uh, the two girls uh, last year. The silver one and the black, brown, and white one. So... They are all kind of related. Oh, and then Clara had Athene too. So they are related as far as girls, but they're not related to the bucks that I breed them to. Even though Rocky was bred at the farm where I got the girls, they're not related. He's from a completely different line. However, he is the son of the same dad that the twins have because when I brought Mocha, she was already pregnant with that buck. So what that means is that the twins will never be able to be bred to Rocky because they're half siblings. That's why I have Dom. And Dom is able to breed the twins and then he's able to breed Athene because Athene is Rocky's girl. So they are related, but they're not uh, <laughs> related because they, they came from the same farm, but not blood related the girls are but the most important thing is the buck that you choose for them so i'm not, I'm not wor worried about it what i'm worried about is if i keep gaia's girl the black girl the first one born i'm afraid that i won't have a buck to breed her to because she can be bred to rocky because again she that's a half brother of the mom and she can be bred to Dom because Dom is Dom is her dad so I would have to bring either new blood which I'm considering or take her somewhere to be bred AI something so that's why I am kind of in the fence if I'm gonna keep her or not I would love to keep her because I think that out of Brie and Gaia I love them both but there's more that I like about Gaia at this point and I think that if Dom is passing his mom's adder, his grandma's adder, I think we can see a great improvement on Gaia's girl. And I'm really happy that she gave me one. So I feel like I almost have to keep her. That's a long story for another day. The, sh the fascination with Chamosé, I think it comes to a very simple coloring that does really well when they go to shows. For whatever reason, when you go to shows, you will see goats from different colors with moon spot, pole, blue eyed. But that does not count in the show ring as far as good points for your doe. 
So what happened is that in the end, you always see that the ghosts that win are either, you know, are the simple Nellies. They're either black or they're brown or they're chamoisee or, you know, but there's so many variations of, of chamoisee that really can look very, very different. I was reading in a blog post that it was talking about how some of the beautiful goats that have very busy patterns but do not so great in a show because they show all their flaws in their top line. It's really hard to um, see them straight as they should be or uphill when they go towards the front or very level in the rump area. It's kind of like they show and it's kind of an illusion of color as well. I don't think there's a really um, a fascination with I think they're the most simple goats that you can get and when I got my girls I got them because I wanted goats not because i love their coloring when i contacted arisha at hansen everdown farms i said do you have any goats available because i knew she was moving to oklahoma and she immediately came back to me and said i have clara and i have her daughter annabelle i said can i go meet them because i did not remember how they look and she said yes so i went i met her i fell in love with clara of course i did uh since day one and clara is a very basic chamoise very basic chamoise and if you follow big breeders they typically have very simple looking goats they don't breed for moon spots they don't breed for blue eyes they don't breed for you know aesthetically pleasing goats they're breeding for the best um, confirmation to the breed standard I think it's driving me insane again so I think it has more to do with whoever does better in shows and that's why I think like if you follow uh, Widow and Reap, she's bring, bringing more chamoises and stuff like that because it's more about their genetics and it's more about the confirmation and not so much about the coloring. Now if you ask me what's your favorite coloring in goats, I would have to say that at this point I really enjoy silver goats that have somewhat of um buckskin pattern so they do have other colors with the silver i think that's my favorite color if i had to pick a color i think that's one of my favorites another color that i really like is mocha's little girl which i think she has a huge moon spot in her face which is black over her chocolate base color and she does have kind of what dom has in the back that little black area in the back that like the Kuklers and cool blancs have but she has a chocolate and then she has this big black on top which i'm assuming is a moon spot where is that moon spot coming from i have no idea i have no idea i don't think actually i'm pretty sure that <laughs> mocha doesn't have moon spots but i'm assuming that maybe dom's side it has i don't know what to tell you but that girl in my opinion that's a moon spot it is a black spot on top of chocolate so i'm gonna try to put close-ups as i'm talking about this i love her and i was wishing for um a cool blanc i think which they're the 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 brown goats that they have the back black i'm gonna put it on the screen uh and that's and i'm actually i'm gonna put dom's mom's picture on the screen so you can see exactly what i wanted i wanted one that looked like that and she's very simple if you look at an alpine it probably looks like that which is a good thing if a nigerian dwarf this is what a breeder told me and i kind of now i go by this rule if a nigerian dwarf looks like an alpine that's a goat you need to get because that really you know they have different standards of course depending on the breed but if you cannot tell the difference there's something that they're doing right because structurally speaking alpines you know have that bigger production those bigger adders and you're like okay and you cannot tell the difference between a nigerian that's the kind of thing that she was talking about but i thought it was um a good comparison and so 
for me, patterns are really fun. And I do want a lot of different golds with different patterns. Like I would love to keep Gaia's black girl because I don't have a gold that is black and a girl. I don't have um, one that looks like Mocha's girl either. So I want to keep that one. And I do have one that looks like Clarita, her mom. But I also know that Clara is up in age and she's only gonna give us a few more years of kidding and then I'm gonna have to retire her. So, because of that, I wanted to have a goat that looks just like her. And I know it sounds horrible. I know, I know it. You don't have to tell me. But I wanted a girl that looked like her so I could have a little bit of a legacy left behind. And it's starting to rain. We're going to have about eight days of nonstop rain starting tonight. Anyways. So, in my opinion... It's not a fascination about that, at least not for me. Uh, I Annabelle is also not a chamoise. She's a buckskin. She's a red buckskin. Her that's her coat color. Um, she, you know, for being a chamoise, they need black legs and they need the belly. They usually have the stripes here on the face. You know, and there's different kinds of chamoise. I happen to love my girls and I don't, it's almost like I can't see their coloring, but I just love every time that they give birth because I get to have fun with the different colorings that they throw because they are chamoisés. I feel like chamoisés are the ones that you can pair them with a really fun color buck with amazing genetics. <laughs> And then you can have some of the most beautiful patterns and colors and everything. So, yeah, I I just think that for bigger breeders, it's about simpler goats that have the best confirmation. That's all they care about and not so much about coloring. And for me, those were the goats that were available. I fell in love with them. I love them. And so every time that I pair them with one of my bucks that I feel like they're more flashy because they either have more white like rocky does and they have that silver and, and he has that silver so he kind of throws beautiful babies and you know now we have dom that is also throwing some of the most beautiful babies with the greatest confirmation and i'm so super excited to see his kids i just cannot believe how much of a difference it's making coming out of a simple chamoise gold with his it's just it's just amazing but it's just fun it really is fun and now i'm starting to learn more about confirmation and things that you know you should look for in a goat and another thing i wanted to mention confirmation doesn't mean that you're gonna win in at least not for me you're gonna win in any kind of show it's more about having the the good confirmation to last her, their lifetime if you have a really bad otter chances are that that goat by the time that she's eight years old nine years old she's gonna have a really saggy bag and she's probably gonna get infections and she's probably gonna get mastitis and she's probably gonna be really miserable because everything is dragging if you have goats that have very bad legs back legs they don't have the angulation and stuff then they start having problems with their legs as soon as they get a little bit up in age same thing with the front legs like there are some cosmetic things like having a long neck that's something that they really want in shows and as far as confirmation and other things that are more aesthetics but they still have a purpose of why that is needed but I just feel like um, there are a lot of things in confirmation that it's more for the well-being of the goat, like uh, a steep rump. The steeper the rump, the harder that it is for a goat to push babies out. That's just a fact. And, um, you know, that's why sometimes you you think you have an old enough to breed doe, but if she, have, if she has a steep rump, and if she's not super wide in the thurls, then you're going to end up with a bunch of stuck babies. Um, so it doesn't really matter if you bred them to a smaller buck. It, you know, there are some goats that structurally shouldn't be having any babies. And that's another thing that, you know, it will be part of the confirmation. So... 
anyways that is it for today i have a few questions that i'm gonna keep for another q a i appreciate you staying with me throughout vlog march i truly appreciated this and i will be back next monday with a new video new exciting video that i want to share with you guys i'm also going to be sharing i don't know if monday's video because I'm going to be kind of busy if not sometime soon I'm going to share with you the girls that I'm going to keep and um, a little bit of you know who's going to leave when and all those things that are starting to pop in my mind now that we're about to turn four weeks old so if you're new around here please remember to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos thanks so much for your support and I'll talk to you guys next time